I don't know anything about 3D printing, but somehow I ended up getting a Bamboo Lab A1 3D printer with the goal of creating my own business in order to basically get all this money back. Long story short, I am a full-time YouTuber, believe it or not. Uh, I am from Sweden, but I now live here in the middle of Taipei, Taiwan, where storage and just living space is at a premium. So uh, this whole uh, starting a business idea will literally be all done from this spare bedroom uh, and to the point is also that I watched my first video about 3d printers in general not even three weeks ago at a time I am recording this video so yeah I guess uh, we're all gonna see how this experiment turns out uh, but for this video since I just received my bamboo a1 printer uh, literally like three days ago I just wanted to share a few things that I wish that I would have known before ordering and receiving this printer and trust me I have done my fair share of research I I'm sure we're up to like 50 hours of, of YouTube videos but there were still a lot of things that kind of surprised me when I actually received my my own 3d printer uh, to the story is that I have absolutely zero experience with anything like DIY I had to go out and, and buy my first tool <laughs> uh, in order to just basically just even unbox and, and cut up all the, the zip ties. So like that's the level we're talking about when it, when it comes to myself. But I just wanted to say that the entire unboxing experience, being a Swede, I'm used to the IKEA process of, of putting things together and just like mounting everything with screws. Could not have, have been any simpler. Everything is like color coded, uh, all the tools are included. Uh, as soon as you have bought yourself this little, uh, whatever you call this, <laughs> to open up the, the zip ties that, that you have. My only advice regarding the whole unboxing and, and setting up process is that uh, don't try to uh, multitask or uh, try to balance your printer while you're also trying to uh, answer the phone. Another thing that you might have already noticed is that I have this AMS light on top mountain rack that you actually mainly print out uh, from Bamboo Lab themselves. They have designed this and you only need like very, very few tools and I think like maybe 10 screws or something. Uh, a little bit confusing because when I did the research online, then they tell you that you should buy the toolkit from Bamboo and they also have like some tutorials online that gives you the link to where to buy this. What I think is the case is that if you're ordering the combo bundle with the AMS light included, which I did, then it's already included in the package. But if you buy the A1 and then you buy the AMS light separately, then you also need to buy this toolkit separately and then print out this mount and then install it on top of the printer if you do want to have it on top to save some very very precious uh, living space yeah that was just one of the many confusing uh, googlings i had to do after i actually received this this printer the second thing that it was quite hard for me to uh, get an idea of was the sound because maybe this is only because related to me but as you can see like i'm, I'm a full-time youtuber and this is like my youtube studio and i am very very close to the printer i honestly don't know if you can hear the, the printer or not i can hear it from this distance let's see we are around Whoa. yeah there you go they got some some demonstrations of my tool capabilities here uh 160 centimeters which is uh, this much in in American meters. And I am just gonna let you hear how the sound is from this distance. And uh, just for uh, testing purposes, uh, since maybe not everyone has a, a Rodecaster and an Shure SM7B, let's try with an iPhone microphone from the same distance as well. It's a very pleasant noise. It's the it's the sound of efficiency and like a working office. So it's not that annoying. Just because of like the PLA fuming I, that I'm not sure if it's safe or not. Uh, I do have the window open when I am uh, printing most of the time. And the street noise from the street down below when I have the window open is way louder and way more annoying 
than this printer sound. Next up, also very much related to the very compact living space that, that I have here myself. I tried to measure all the, the measurements before I actually got it here, just so I could like try to reorganize my, my little uh, bedroom here. I did not realize that not only do I need space for the actual printer, they also needs like 20 plus 10 plus 10 centimeters like safety zone because of like how the bed is moving. And then you also might want some room for like a bigger uh, poop bucket or whatever we, we call it these days. So it does take up a little bit more space than you might see on the measurements. Uh, most people should be fine with this, I think. But if your, your actual space is very, very precious, just have that in mind, include like some, some buffer there as well. Next thing that I wish I would have known are the, the different tools that I would need. And I'm not talking about like the 3D printing tools uh, specifically. If you would go up to like the, the Bambi stu uh, Bambi, uh, Bamboo uh, app and, and uh, the studio, uh, you will see like the, the little bed scraper and you will also see like these handles for these uh, hex screws. I'm talking about like the, the normal tools and the, the tweezers and, and, and everything. I have no experience with tools like this and English is also not my first language. So I have like no clue what you would call this and even like how you would start a Google search basically. But I have ended up buying three different uh, batches of tools. So I thought that just having this little knips thing uh, would be like one, one tool fits all. Turns out that this is a little too sharp and a little too strong. So when you're actually gonna try to get out like all the supports, uh, you end up like cutting it off instead of like pulling it out. And for example, when I was installing this entire AMS light uh, top mount, literally the most difficult thing was to get the support materials out from the screw holes inside of the, the, the print. Uh, because I only had like, this tool and and it was it was a mess and but i could also say like just try to get uh smaller tools than you think that you need because uh, this is like i think maybe the largest tools that you should have at least in the beginning uh, because all these uh, little things and the supports specifically are are very very small so you need something uh, tiny yet powerful next up is something that i didn't do a single minute of research regarding before i got my printer but something that i have used literally every single print since this machine arrived and that is the bamboo lab handy app and i have have done everything on my phone. Uh, I have not opened the, the Bamboo Studio once and uh, you can print anything from, from like the, the Maker Lab and, and everything online, uh, at least so far. It's only been three days, but you can literally do anything that you want with, with this app and selecting different profiles, which I have to admit was a little bit uh, confusing in the beginning. So they have all these different the, the designs that you would then download and, and send over to the, to the printer. And then you also get to choose the different profiles. And I was very very confused because there was like no place where I could choose my exact uh, like nozzle size specifically. I'm using like the standard 0.4 and I have not really paid attention to that <laughs> when I picked like the different profiles. So far, I don't know if I've just been extremely lucky or if the machine somehow knows all of this. Not a single issue with a single print. I have, I've printed a bunch of, of different things so far and uh, it all just works. It's absolutely amazing. Just how I was hoping and expecting it to work. The printer has been going literally almost 24 7 we're gonna talk about this uh, in a bit and yeah it just works straight from the app next thing uh, which is something that everyone told me but that i did not still realize every single one especially like on in in the subreddits and and uh, all the youtube videos just tells you to buy a lot of filaments just because you will run out like right away and i i did i thought i was <laughs> like you know buffering up i bought like 10 spools together with my my a1 uh, what i did not realize is that I think you should prioritize getting different colors instead of just getting like, I got like five colors and two spools each because I thought that I was just gonna like run out of, of the filaments like right away. Uh, but I'm realizing now that although I still have like, you know, seven kilos of uh, spools under my, my bench here, I only have like four colors. It's, it, it's not really limiting because you can 
still print like all the functional prints that you want but i see like for example all these cool little uh, pikachu or pokemons or whatever that you i want and i'm like oh i'm missing like five out of the six colors i need for this specific one so uh yeah when you're ordering uh, something online just make sure that you get as many different colors as uh, as possible i also ended up only getting the the matte version of the pla but when you do ordering the the a1 you get this like uh, filament swatches so you can actually compare like all the different colors and i have to say that i think that the basic version most of the time looks a little bit better it's uh it's not as glossy as i was afraid it would be which is why i ordered the, the matte colors and i do feel like the colors are a little bit more like they're, they're popping a little bit more i'm not super super happy with the the matte colors they looks a little they look a little bit too washed out compared to how i picturing it online in all the other videos and last but definitely not least and in fact my absolute biggest regret uh, when buying this uh, a1 3d printer everyone online is very clear saying that after the print is done you should wait like until the print cooled down in order to remove it like safely from the the bed plate or the or for the from the sheet what no one actually pointed out is that it takes like 30 45 minutes to to get it down to like the recommended temperature of 30 degrees apparently after the the print is done so there are two temperatures that i didn't even realize so the nozzle has one temperature and then the actual like bed like the the plate is also heated up to another temperature and in my case most of the time it's like around 65 degrees celsius and they say that you should wait until it goes down to like 30 degrees before you remove it and then remove the prints which i knew about but i didn't think that was such a big deal because like you know i can wait 30 minutes before i start to play with my my spinner thing you know what i did not realize is that that also means that i have to wait an extra like 30 minutes before i can remove the first print and then reuse the same plate for print number two. And especially in the beginning, like you do, I mean, this, okay, this is kind of like useless, but especially in the beginning, you do so many like smaller prints in order to just like get started with the machine. So most of the prints that I've been printing for like the first two days were less than 30 minutes. But then once they finished, I have to wait like another 30 minutes in order for like the, the plate to cool down so I can reuse it for print number two. And it just feels like there is so much like wasted time. And of course, if you are printing like bigger prints, like if you're spending like, you know, eight hours and, and you're printing overnight, totally not a big deal. But the one thing that I wish I would have done was to buy a second plate right away when uh, when i placed my my first order if i would have done that my experience would have been perfect and literally like as soon as i realized this i i went down to like uh, bamboo lab and i placed another order and i also have some some spare uh, nozzles uh, coming in it since it takes like a week to to get all the products from them uh, so i bought like some spare parts that i feel like i i want uh, some extra nozzles and stuff like this and uh, just a lot more plates <laughs> because uh, i feel like that's like the the bottleneck of this entire uh, wannabe uh, business uh, factory right now. But yeah, um, hopefully you found this video maybe not so helpful, I guess, but like entertaining at least. And uh, if you are in the same position, been thinking about 3D printing, have any questions to someone that is completely uh, beginner, uh, but have actually received the, the A1 Bamboo Lab printer, just leave a comment down below as I am learning more things about this entire hobby uh, i will making some more videos here on the channel and then uh, i will also uh, show you how it works to set up your own web shop uh, hopefully what the most profitable prints will be and uh, how that entire shopify slash etsy circus will look like later as well until then my name is lucas starts with l as in like ends with s as you subscribe please do both and see you all in the next one